Welcome to LTV's Israel Daily, I'm Amita Rari and coming up in today's newscast. The numbers are going up with well over 100,000 citizens rallying against the new government in Tel Aviv. Meantime, Prime Minister Netanyahu firing his deputy and coalition partner Ari Deri from the cabinet. And later, New York Jews tapping into their inner warrior and pushing back against the rise in anti-Semitic violence. Enormous demonstrations gripping the country over the weekend as anti-government protesters picking up momentum across the country. Aaron Porras reporting. Among the largest protests in Israeli history, some 110,000 Israelis heading to the heart of Tel Aviv for the third week in a row. And thousands more heading to similar rallies in Jerusalem, Haifa, Be'er Sheva and elsewhere, all to demonstrate against the judicial amendments proposed by Justice Minister Yariv Levine, which critics argue would forever damage the court's ability to keep the executive and legislative branches in check. One of the organizers, the Movement for Quality Government in Israel, saying that protesters are, quote, acting against the dangerous revolution that the new government is planning to advance and which will destroy Israeli democracy, end quote. Likewise, legal experts as well as opposition heads, including former Defense Minister Benny Gantz and former Prime Minister Yair Lapid, leading the demonstrations, saying that citizens must take advantage of their legal right to protest. <laughs> Still, proponents of the reform saying that it's necessary to curb the court's history of activism and is hardly as dangerous as critics would have you think. And Netanyahu's coalition planning to vote on the first reading of the bill in Knesset by February 1st. The prime minister repeatedly saying that his government received a mandate from voters to enact such reforms on their behalf and that the planned changes would strengthen democracy rather than end it. Now, in protest-related news, legal petitions against the Netanyahu government's proposed reforms extending to Exterior Minister and Health Minister Ari Deri. This has Netanyahu forced to fire his coalition partner from the cabinet in accordance with the High Court's ruling. RTV's Aaron Porras with the latest. Sending shockwaves through the government, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu expected to dismiss Shas leader Arya Deri from his ministerial roles during Sunday's weekly cabinet meeting, and the dismissal to likely come into effect by Tuesday morning. This in accordance with a landmark ruling just four days earlier, in which the High Court of Justice ordered Netanyahu to fire Deri, saying that Deri cannot be a minister in light of his multiple criminal convictions. But as both Minister of Interior and Minister of Health, as well as Netanyahu's largest coalition partner, the government is taking every action to find a solution that would enable Deri to remain active in the cabinet, if not return to it soon. In the meantime, it's unclear how the coalition will restructure or what the Shas party will do should an amicable solution not be found. What we do know is that while Netanyahu did not address the High Court's ruling against Deri, Deri's seat at the cabinet meeting next to Netanyahu was left vacant, and Netanyahu given a limited but, quote, reasonable amount of time to comply with the courts, which likely ended some three days after the ruling. So had Deri been present on Sunday in his role as minister, legal experts saying that the prime minister would have definitely risked being held in contempt of court. Joining us now with more on the government's legal challenges and judicial reform proposals is legal affair correspondent with the Jerusalem Post, Michael Starr. So, Michael, over 100,000 protesters in Tel Aviv and many thousands more in other cities. It does appear that the anti-judicial reform movement is picking up steam, but doesn't have a path to victory, you think? Well, these 
these protests do seem to be going on. Uh, they're going to be continuing for the foreseeable future. All the protest parties seem to be uh, you know, quite taken with the, the amount of uh, presence that have, that have been made at these protests. You know, we saw them begin in Tel Aviv, and uh, they've been crept, creeping along to other cities as well. All the protest organizations have said that they're going to be holding uh, uh, protests this coming Saturday as well. Um, there were protests today uh, as well uh, by youth groups. Uh, more and more groups are getting involved. Uh, you're saying groups like the the, the ropes movement, um, but whether they they have any lasting impact, whether they can force the government's hand, that remains to be seen. We're we're seeing the, these protests, uh, you know, spirit uh, manifesting as well in the uh, official political forums with the uh, opposition uh, boycotting. The law committee today, uh, when they're discussing the uh, the basic law, uh, the judiciary uh, amendment as part of the uh, the judicial reforms, um, there is a discussion going on. There there is room for for compromise, I believe, uh, with uh, you know, the the coalition. Uh, question is if uh, the opposition is was willing to take advantage of that or not or if they think they can force the uh, the coalition uh, solely based off of the momentum of the protest. That, that does remain to be seen. Now, Michael, from what you can tell, is the protest movement only made up of never BB voters or are there some other Likud types who say this extreme reform is not what they voted for? Who are the voices actually protesting there? Well, there, there does seem to be a broad coalition of uh, of protesters. Uh, I think that the coalition supporters would have you believe that it's uh, simply, you know, a, a far left movements uh, that, uh, uh, you know, are, are just pro-Palestinian causes or anti-Israel causes to try to, uh, you know, explain it away as, as extremism. But as we can see, it does have broad support based on numbers. Um, and uh, we do see people who are concerns not on the political level, but uh, on the ideological or uh, um, you know, legal level. You see uh, uh, movements of lawyers and, and uh, educators who are concerned uh, about how this will impact the legal system. Uh, and you see people who are, uh, you know, consider themselves pro-democracy uh, activists who are concerned that we're going to be removing uh, a vital check and balance to an already weak uh, uh, system when it comes to check and balances. So uh, you do see a very broad coalition, uh, whether there is a movement on, on to include the uh, right wing uh, movement, so to speak, uh, within that anti-reform coalition. It hasn't expressed itself as far as I can see, uh, but maybe, uh, maybe in the future. Now we're constantly hearing that it's everyone's uh, demonstration. Now, moving on to Arya Deri, what are the government's next moves after the high court forced Netanyahu to fire him today? Is it fair to say that the coalition has hardened its stance and will push for most far-reaching judicial reforms? Well, it is interesting because uh, it's very hard at this point to disentangle the judicial reforms from the Deri case. This is both from the left and from the right, or anti-reform, pro-reform, however you want to, to phrase it or frame it, uh, both sides see the reform and dairy as being connected. Either they, during the, uh, sorry, rather following the dairy ruling, in which it was ruled that Benjamin Netanyahu had to fire, uh, uh, now uh, former minister Derry, uh, you know, left-wing and uh, anti-reform protesters uh, saw this, or stated rather explicitly, uh, that this was part of their continuing fight against the judicial reform and to push on harder. And on the, the mirror, the contrary to this, was that the uh, the protesters, the anti-reform, or the pro-reform rather, uh, said this was a trigger or this was a reason for why the judicial reforms uh, should be pushed on. And this is uh, you know, in part because, you know, the judicial reforms already contained uh, items, already contained provisions uh, that were deeply connected uh, to uh, the case of Arya Derry and why uh, he should be uh, uh, fired from his position. Um, how could this, you know, affect things in the future? 
you know there there is uh, you know I guess you can say getting rid of the 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 provision that led to Arya Derry's um, removal, a sort of uh, come back, uh, getting rid of the reasonableness clause.